Hi, this is your host, Supil Bharti, and we are here at Open Source Summit in Bilbao, Spain. And today we have with us Marcus Kumle, Program Manager at Magenta Exposure API. First of all, it's great to have you on the show. Hi, oh, yeah, welcome. Let's go back in the history and the origin of the project, how it came to exist. Yeah, I think the starting point is um, that telcos have de decided to open their networks. Um, the reason for this is um, that the business cases today need to be optimized and we can't stop at the, at the border of the networks. We have to integrate it. So there's a great value, a great benefit for the customers in doing it. On the other hand, telcos are searching for additional revenues. So they are, don't, don't stick anymore on, on keeping connectivity. So it's, it's a win-win situation to open the networks. That was the starting point. And um, then it's clear in today's uh, world, we do it via automatic things, so we are APIs. Um, the first trials were with very technical APIs and that failed. Uh, so telco industry has now learned. And uh, the next step is with Camara. So we try to define an intent-based level of the APIs, a simple, easy to use API and doing all the telco complexity behind and not uh, bothering the developer with that. And that was the starting idea of Camara. Uh, when we then reached out to the first customers, they clearly told us, look, it's nice that you do it in Germany. Uh, we can build very nice niche applications, but our business needs the APIs in all the networks. And uh, if our products go to different countries, it's necessary that they work too. So we need a, a global availability of these APIs. And that was the starting idea to reach out to the others to see if we can do a common alliance um, to, to work on these APIs. When we are looking at the Kamara project, because telcos, they do a lot of things. So is Kamara solving a specific problem for telcos? Or no, since it's API, so it's like across the verticals that telcos use. They solve a specific problem. They are the interface between the telco industry and the customers. They standardize or de facto standardize this interface. And, and also this small specific scope um, is, a, is a key success factor for, for Camara. What kind of adoption you are seeing? And if you can also talk about, in terms of adoption, what kind of community has built around this project? Okay, Let, let's divide it in two phases. So the first one was the phase directly after the first ideas. So we, we thought about how we can implement such an alliance and we quickly came um, to the point that we decided not to doing via a standardization organization, creating a lot of paper and taking a lot of time for that, um, but going differently, doing standardization via code. And that immediately brought us to open source uh, to start an open source project and we reached out to the Linux Foundation as the biggest uh, institution on this planet doing very successful open source projects and uh, we are very happy to got a lot of support here and um, then we started working on the open source project but immediately it was important for us to keep the domain knowledge in so we reached out also to the GSMA to be a second sponsor and um, in the beginning, we had a lot of talks between these organizations and uh, legal alignments also to make it happen. So, and at the end, we were very happy to launch it at Mobile World Congress 22. We've already 22 partners um, and then being official an open source project. Since then, um, Camara has dramatically uh, grown. Um, we have now, I think, more than 750 people in Camara from more than 250 companies globally. So from Guatemala, Uruguay, Peru, uh, the US, um, up to, I think, Australia, even Hawaii uh, is in. Uh, and that's really, really a good success for us. Um, on the other hand, we had a lot of talks with other standardization organizations, e.g. the, the Etsy Mac or um, the TM Forum. And um, at the end, we aligned on, a, on an ecosystem for these APIs. And the outcome was a, a white paper published by the Linux Foundation, by GSMA and by TM Forum. And in that, uh, Camaro is dedicated to be the organization defining the APIs, the interface between the telco industry 
and the customers on this planet. And that's for me the real success. Can you also talk a bit about the organizational structure of Kamara project? We started um, as, a, as a typical open source project, a community-based project. So people are invited to come in, to contribute, to see what they can use, where they can bring value in or um, get value out. Um, we early identified that it's necessary to split the work. So we decided to split it in the different API families so that things can move on independently. Um, but having a kind of central instance looking on it, which was the, the steering committee, it was named like that. That was in the past. Um, we now see with the, with the success of Camara that we have to change it. Um, because, yeah, industry is looking on us and we should be a reliant partner of the industry and that needs that we have to do delivery. And so I am very happy that we can now change it with the support of the Linux Foundation. Um, so we have added a, a Camara Fund project on it and already got 15 sponsors for that, which is really great. And that helps us to get a little money to have better tooling, better support, to increase the release cycles, um, to work faster and uh, to be a, really a, a good and reliant partner for the whole industry. How different is Kamara project from a lot of other uh, projects? So for, our, for us, um, this, this, we, we don't have one product. Um, we have the different APIs and they are running independently in the past, but also that will change. So we have implemented now a strong technical steering committee who will um, look on the scope of each API family that all fits together. We want to provide one fitting solution um, and then that means that this technical steering committee also will define the release cycles for the APIs uh, and all that kind of stuff. That is now coming. Here we are working um, to, be, to be a real um, um, pushy partner. What are the immediate goals that you folks have or at the same time the challenges that you want to solve? The challenges for Camara uh, are that we provide the best APIs for the, for the telco industry. That is our main scope, and, and here we have to focus. But I think the real challenges now are outside of uh, Camara, uh, because the next step is to monetize the APIs, so to work on the exposure of the APIs, create real products, and um, earn some money for it. Um, the second big challenge, which is coming, customers are asking, uh, how do we really technical do this seamless access? So that means, um, if, for example, a car drives from one country to another, how it is assured that the API works properly in both countries. So that can be done by an aggregation or we can do it by a federation between operators. Uh, so we need a solution for that. And that is the next big thing which has to be done. But as stated, it's um, outside of Camara, it's a, a problem of the ecosystem. When we look at telecom or when we look at connectivity, you know, uh, in the modern world, power, which you folks have, LF Energy and telecom without connect, this world will come to a standstill, which means that the careers play a very big role in keeping the world running. So you talked about the cars, everything is connected these days. So can you, sometimes with Linux Foundation, project starts with a smaller scope, but just like Linux kernel, suddenly when you put it in the, the open source community, the adoption, it shocks you. Oh, they are using this project. So what kind of scope do you see of Kamara project? <laughs> That's a very good question. Yeah, hopefully we see a lot of implementations of our APIs. Already on mobile work congress this year, we could see uh, 20, 22 implementations of Kamara APIs in live networks all over the world. So from Brazil up to Indonesia, that was already really great. But uh, I think the next step, an important step, is that we see real products, which customers can buy, and, and seeing customers paying for it, that's the, uh, the next step, which is very important. What kind of folks should join the project? It will help them as well. Or what kind of folks should join the project and how they can join? Yeah, that's a very good question. Thanks a lot. So we are already happy to have um, the most important vendors in, in Camara. Um, we have a lot of the operators. We have a good coverage for, for the US, for Europe, uh, getting more and more coverage for Asia. Um, but we only have a few customers in. 
and um, that could be a good step to win more customers because we want to create the best APIs and that means fulfilling the, the demand of the customers. So we should know this demand and for that uh, I would like to invite all the customers to come into Camara to bring their ideas to help us to create the best APIs uh, of that world. Marcus, thank you so much for taking time out today and give us an update on the Kamara project. And I would love to chat with you again when there are more members, more uh, developments with the project. So thank you for your time today. Thanks too, you're really welcome.